Hello everyone, it is Christine here and I'm back for Thrifty Thursday and also for Op Shop Crafter that's hosted by the lovely Valita. Um, I'll include links to both in the description below. So this is yet another bundle which I have not shown you in a previous Thrifty Thursday and I have not been shopping since I started my uh, stitch tree swap square. So it's been good actually to have the chance to not be adding to my stash, to be using my stash and just to be having a look at um, some of the bits of stash that I have previously got that I have not looked through properly. So this bundle was from the lovely purveyor of reclaimed fabrics um, quite some time ago. And it includes a range of fabrics, um, a book, lots of threads, uh, braids, trims. So lots of interesting things and all wonderfully vintage. So first up we have this book, an encyclopedia of ribbon embroidery flowers, which looks like it's going to be super useful. 121 designs. All the different um, techniques, some nice colour um, images in it, and then just really good descriptions of how to create each of the flowers, which look to be all in alphabetical um, order. So I think that's going to be super, super helpful because I do want to get more into, into ribbon embroidery. And it even shows you how you can create the, the gorgeous scene that's on the, on the front. Isn't that lovely? So that's that one. Um, and Melanie has, yeah, really good price books. Like it would have originally probably been $16 or she might have got it for $16 herself, but then usually sells them. Sometimes as low as sort of um, $5, sometimes $10, but yeah, definitely a lot less than, than retail. And you can look them up online and sometimes she's selling them just at a, a fraction of what the vintage book price is. So let's start by having a look at some of the fabrics. So they're always different sizes, um, depending on what she's got in her in her stash. But perfect sizes for slow stitch, actually um, sort of ample sizes of fabric. Um, I picked up some various Japanese styled fabrics because I thought they could be fun to use in a project I'm going to do focusing on different places that I've travelled to. So that can go in that um, project box. Then another... I think this one could be a Japanese style as well, yep. And this one's got beautiful, beautiful, glorious birds on it. You know how much I love love my birds and my flowers? Isn't that lovely? Look at that bird in flight. Very, very nice. Another little bird up here in the corner. Plenty, plenty of birds to get out of that and just beautiful foliage, beautiful. Um, they look like orchids. Really, really lovely. So again, I'll pop that into my... Japanese box. Okay, this one looks like it could be good for my burgundy bonheur piece. Oh yeah, I remember this one when I saw it. So um, Melanie from Purveyor of Reclaim Textiles just has an Instagram account where she posts um, the pictures of the items for sale and you just post sold on them. And I remember seeing this one and thinking, oh yeah, isn't it fun? It's got um, the little sort of pin cushions and pins and scissors. So that's a lovely little haberdashery themed piece. So yeah, I'll put that with my burgundy bonheur pile. This one then I think is Japanese styled, but again, I thought, oh, it's got a nice burgundy tone to it. So I might keep that one, although probably, I don't know, I don't think I'll be using, I am going to use the gold. Yeah, I think it could stay actually with my, my burgundy, burgundy piece for now. And then just a little, a little fabric. Um, so I think, I'm pretty sure these ones were um, Liberty fabric samples that um, Melanie had. It definitely feels like a, feels like a Liberty. It's lovely. And again, it's a nice, it's got a little bit of fluff on it. Nice burgundy colour. So I might keep that with my burgundies too. Then I've got this toile. I love myself for toile. And this one was a nice black and linen coloured one. So I just have to pick something up that fell to the floor. So isn't that lovely? Fountains could have used that when we were doing our down the garden path. Let's have a full, full look at it. Isn't that lovely? It's got little boats. 
separate. Like they're nice because you can cut out the little elements. Oh, look at that little dog. I love that. So yeah, I think even bits of this could go in the burgundy and bonheur and I could even do some outline stitching around it um, as well. But I, I've already got a piece of burgundy um, toile which I used for my monogram piece. But yeah, I just even love um, the little, where even where it finishes up, it just makes a lovely little scene to even cut little, little bits out. Beautiful music scene over here. So that's a very nice sizable piece of, of toile. Oh, sorry, just bumped the camera. Apologies for that. I'll put that with my burgundy piece as well. Keep working through the fabrics. I think this might have been a Liberty sample as well. Not sure. It looks quite, yeah, quite an old. Something textile, so maybe it's not a Liberty. But it's a lovely, soft, um, vintage cotton. Uh, pop that just in the regular regular supply I think this one's lovely let's see if it's got a selvage edge on it. it does remind me a bit of a William Morris but I'm not sure if it is but yeah just love the love the foliage the green the blue and the sort of silvery gray is very nice okay there. Ah, I remember this one, the Paris inspired. It's got the map of Paris or parts thereof. Got the Seine, Place de Republique, Saint Trinity, Eiffel Tower, Paradis. So yeah, I thought that was a bit of, bit of fun and then got little dancing ballerinas on it. So again, that will go in my um, project box for when I do my places I have visited and spent time. Just need enough time to do all my project ideas. And then this one, lovely, feels like maybe a little, possibly could have come off a, oh no, not for, off a tablecloth, it's probably a sample maybe, um, coca made in Japan. So that can again go in my Japan box, but just beautiful. Beautiful, vibrant colours. And this one. Oh, that's lovely. Got little threads on it. Isn't that beautiful? Beautiful greens, greeny blues. And again, plenty of opportunity to um, to cut out the elements. This one feels like maybe it could have been like a curtain or something possibly because it's got a hem on it. I suppose it could have been a tablecloth as well. But that's lovely. Almost looks like it's sort of, yeah, painted. Beautiful linen. Keep going through the fabrics. Oh, a Christmas one. It will be Christmas before we, before we know it. And this one I thought um, looked good because you can just um, cut out the sort of individual elements of it. But it's got that nice, yeah, got little postcard and little stamps. So I like those ones that almost look like they're sort of scrapbooked fabrics. So that will be fun. Pop that in my Christmas box. Got a beautiful lace. I think it's quite old because it's already discoloured sort of over in this section. It's just a section of lace, but again, these are fabulous to be able to cut out and fussy cut um, the different elements of them because you can cut that one fully around and have it fully separate then from um, this element is joined, but you'd be able to find a little spot where you could where you could cut it. Um, or you just use a, a row of that along a, a border section, but it's great even if you just take a little little section of it. It's really nice for adding dimension and a bit of interest to your piece. And even these edging pieces are just great. You can um, crinkle them up to add sort of texture to your background and sort of, yeah, soften things as well if you layer them, layer them over the top. So that sort of thing is super useful and you don't need a lot of it because you can just gradually eat away at it. I think this could be another little Liberty sample, I'm not sure. But isn't that cute? Little house, little animals. 
that is really lovely I've actually got another little project square I'm doing so I'll put that aside with that one finding lots of useful things for my project ideas and then a lovely fabric here beautiful roses and again perfect for being able to um, cut out and um, stitch over do thread painting on um, and that one could go in my burgundy bonheur because it's got the burgundy it's got the golds and a little bit of green which are all my all my colors so I'll put it with that and then this one is this another one of the Japanese fabrics I'm not sure can't see a selvage on it but this one's got beautiful birds again so lovely birds a bit of a thread on it got a bit of crease in the fabric but that's easily fixed with an iron butterflies yeah I like that lovely lovely birds very vibrant probably more on the red than the burgundy side I think but might put it in for now and we can can decide and this one looks almost like a toile. Oh, yeah, we've got a selvage edge. Wyndham Fabrics presents Wed Wedgwood by Whistler Studios. So that's a bit of fun. A bit lovely. Beautiful, beautiful feeling fabric. Really tight weave, but um, feels just lovely and soft. I'm sure if it's got some linen in it as well but yeah it's beautiful and again you can yeah take little little elements and I think I think that can go in with my burgundy even though it's slightly erring more on the the red side of burgundy I think we can we could possibly integrate some of that in um I think another Paris fabric that can go in my places I've traveled and stayed um book that I'm planning to make or project I haven't yet decided out exactly what what project I'll make but isn't that lovely wouldn't it be nice just to have yeah and cut those out and use them and this one is called Eiffel Tower not surprisingly um Michael Miller ah it's a Michael Miller fabric I have admired many of his fabrics but because I buy mostly secondhand um fabrics it's nice when I get something that I've had my had my eye on. And then just a lovely a little vintage cotton with just lovely, very sweet um, flowers. They would have been perfect for my recent piece that I did for the lovely Jane W where I used the pinks and blues and purples in it. Similar to that vintage um, pillowcase that I used for that one. That's sweet. And then, do love my blue and white. Just love it as a combination. Still haven't decided if I'm going to do the piece um, that I did the mood board for for Roxy's Journal of Stitchery. I think I'm probably going to use the this colour scheme in my uh, treasury of stitches where we're doing a new stitch every day and I'll be putting them all together in a book and bringing in um, various yeah bits of fabric and the prompts from the treasury um, the treasure hunt that we're doing with Roxy Journal of Stitchery um, but I'll be doing that after I've finished all my stitch squares which I'm still ma madly working away on um, but they'll all be done ahead of the end of end of August and I'll get thoroughly back into to Roxy's Journal of Stitchery and by then we will have had a few prompts so I'll be able to really have some fun combining the different prompts together so I think I'll keep that one out with the the blues and whites another blue and white so yeah I think I was very good when I was buying all of this I was thinking about which projects would it be would it be good for so this one's got a little bit of stretch in it which is could be handy if I want to make a little pouch or something where I want a bit of bit of stretch but again, nice to just be able to cut out sort of elements or use little sections of it. But that's beautiful. I'll keep that out for my blue and white as well. Oh, isn't that lovely? That would have been great um, for the recent piece, which you haven't seen the video of yet, where I was using this colour palette, which, yeah, can't wait to share it, but it's got to travel over to the UK first, so you probably won't get to see that stick tree square for a couple of weeks yet beautiful fine linen just just lovely 
I do like that. It actually goes really well with the Blue de France. Um, this is a new fabric range um, that I've got, yeah, got probably about six or nine months ago. Um, the Blue de France range, but it, yeah, it's almost the exact same color tone. So a bit more grungy because it's a vintage fabric, but I'm going to keep that one with those ones, I think. And then we'll move on to this. Oh, isn't that lovely? Better turn it up the right way. These will be gorgeous for my burgundy bonheur. It's got the golds, the greens, that very antique vintage vintage look to it. It's lovely. And this sort of um, braid border detailing. So I'll pop that in that box. And then my florals, it's just a section, but again, these work great as little, actually they're probably the perfect size for the little stitchery swap squares we're doing, because you only need 10 centimetres by 10 centimetres for those. And again, they'll be fun to do um, colouring in with thread or painting with thread, whatever you want to call it. We were joking in one of the, the comments, it'd be great to make a, well not joking, probably actually thinking about the idea, like if you had um, blacks and white um, or sort of more line drawn images on fabric, you can make your own colouring book, but for thread colouring. Oops, just notice my little pair of scissors are there, I'll just put those to the side. This one's beautiful and vibrant, it's got a selvage on it. And floral collection, flower sugar. Oh, printed by Lishian, made in Japan. So this is, um, this I think would be one of the fabrics um, that the owner of Lucello designs, I think. How beautiful is that? Feels lovely. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. It's lovely. I think Sarah from um, Roxy Creations by Sarah, I think that this would be right up her, her colour scheme. It's beautiful. Put that in my, my general, general collection. Then we've got, oh wow, look at this one. Which way does it go? This way. Have a look at the detail on this, isn't that beautiful? Applicate leaves. It's got this little mesh in the center. That is exquisite. So, so, so beautiful. And I love how it's, um, yeah, tran translucent. And then it's got this beautiful little bit of edging on it. Beautiful little edge detail all the way around. Cut out design. Very, very sweet. That aside. It's amazing how much there can be one one bag of goodies. Just a beautiful vintage feel. Um, blues and roses. Just, yeah, very sweet design. And then another lovely floral. I just yeah tend to, tend to love the same same sorts of things. But again, they're just nice sizes of fabric, plenty to go around, plenty to use, and still have a have a bit left over. So little bouquet by Tanya Whelan for Free Spirit Westminster fibers. So it's got a few threads stuck to it, but I'll let you have a close up look at it. Fold that up. It's better to fold as we go. What have we got here? Some trim. Again, just great to get some smaller sections of interesting trims to use. I do like that. That might be nice to add to my treasury of stitches as well. Might go well with the blues and the whites. And another lovely little fragment of tulle with um, embroidery on it so a tulle lace so I might keep that out because that might be nice just to have to nibble into 
Then we've got some, Melanie has these fabulous vintage yo-yos that are very vintage, you can just tell. Um, I'll probably end up, I'll give these a, a wash. But they're just lovely. And they would have all been part of a quilt made out of yo-yos. Oh, this one could be good for something coming up for Roxy's Journal of Stitchery as well. So it's in the right colours, the goldeny sort of um, colour as the base. And then it's got samplers on it. So I wonder if we're going to get a prompt of sampler or... We've had a monogram, so I guess it could go on as a sort of monogram, although it's obviously more letters. Um, or I could even use the sections of it for my own, adding some more additional little monograms. But I'll keep that out for my burgundy bonheur piece. But plenty in that piece. I can feel I've got a cramp in my foot. Maybe I haven't been having enough, enough salt. Very strange. And this one's a lovely linen, just gorgeous. Beautiful, beautiful. Do you want to have a closer look up there? Wow, that's delightful. Definitely, that's definitely a candidate for thread painting. Do you just love how many colours are in this particular, this particular piece of fabric or flower? So I can go with my florals. Little, I think this might be another little Liberty sample ocean. How lovely is that? Very Japanese as well. So I think that one will go in my little Japanese. Probably didn't let you have a proper look. It's a bit creased. That's really lovely. I do like that. And then another, oh, this is another colorway of that um, Paris fabric. So that's nice too. Blues with um, quite a vibrant, ready, almost pinky color. Lovely. Put that over here. And I think this is another, I think this is a New York inspired one, if I remember from when I was buying them. Again, all just from the vintage stash of, of Melanie from Purveyor of Reclaimed Textiles. Um, even though I haven't been to New York, I thought even just some of these nice um, architectural elements might, might be nice to include in other cities. Um, just love that, the architectural style drawings, it's beautiful. And the writing, the stamps, that is fun. And in fact, I can even use the C for a monogram for myself. <laughs> there you go. I should fold it the right way so I can actually see what's on the fabric. Maybe Mel keeps them the other way so they don't get faded in, in colour. going through the fabrics I think we're almost through the fabrics and then we can get onto the trims and onto the threads so another lovely sample jade and that's beautiful it looks like it's almost been um, hand printed almost a watercolor sort of print by the way the the colors are, are sort of molding across the piece that's really interesting and I don't think I've got anything quite in that in that colorway and this one, I'm, yeah, so I think those are both Japanese fabric samples. I'd have to look back to, to what they were. Isn't that beautiful? And wouldn't these be lovely just to include as um, little round elements in the piece, almost like little, little stamps stitched on? That is going to be very, very useful. Let's give you a proper look. Lovely, lovely. Very happy with that. I'll put that with my Japanese goodies, I think, along with that other other piece from just before. And then this one, I think, was also a Japanese one, Nasturtium. Isn't that sweet? Again, just lovely printing with um, lots of, yeah, lots of colour variation across it. Maybe they've used multiple colours of printing um, on the piece. And then... Not sure what they I can't even remember what this bundle was. I do remember seeing something with a, a card wrapped up with it, I guess, to give the sense of the size of it, perhaps. A reclaimed recycled bundle of fabrics. So they're possibly ones that Melanie just puts together herself. But how great to have all these stripes. Not that I don't have enough stripes from the reverse art truck, but um, yeah, there's fun. They look like maybe from shirt 
probably from shirt fabrics, I think. But lots of great colours there. I've actually, I actually need a bit of purple for something, one of my other stitchery squares. So I might just pull that purple out. And I might pull out that purple and green as well. Yeah. And then I'll wrap it all up again into its nice presentation. Isn't that a great idea using a, um, a card? It's the Joker card, a Joker card to um, do the little, the little bundling and even using the fabric as a, a wrap around as well. Probably almost don't even need that. I don't think I actually need the elastic band, so I'll keep that separate. And then onto the trims. I, I'm a I'm a sucker for lovely, lovely trims. And this, I didn't actually expect it to be so um, large and so, so much of it. So that's great. Look at that. That is a very nice vintage trim. And yeah, a really, really good quantity. So very happy about that. Might keep it out so that I do start to start to use a bit of that. This one, again, I couldn't tell what size they were from the picture, but I'm so happy that they're beautiful little petite um, little petite baubles and how lovely will they be like for decorating a Christmas tree you could even paint them with some gold like a little fabric Christmas tree or just adding on the edges of pieces just as extra extra detailing so I'll keep those out as well another lovely trim isn't that beautiful I might take the sticky tape off but sticky tape can tend to disintegrate a bit and become a bit of a problem don't even know if this has actually <laughs> become so stuck to the fabric that it's not going to yeah I think it's actually become almost integrated into the into the fabric let's see oh no it's coming off although it more wants to stick to the fabric than actually actually peel off let's just get rid of that sticky tape before it does any further further disintegrating if I can there we go yeah it's quite yellowed quite old again you know the age of age of these things in fact I think even the sticky tape had kind of morphed in here it's got a little bit of stick at the back so definitely good that I took that off but have a look at that isn't that trim lovely and look at how much um, stitching for that so again a very nice quantity of that but yeah I might leave leave that out so I'll take a little bit off it and um, keep it in my available in front of me stash Another little trim, lovely little, are they little butterflies? I'm trying to work, yeah, I think they're little butterflies there and I'm not sure what those little ones are. But yeah, nice vibrant little trim. And then we are onto the different, oh no, another trim here. Just the little bit of trim. That could go in my Japanese, that looks quite Japanese to me. So I'm gonna pop that over with the, the Japanese goodies and then we get into um, this would have probably been just one bundle of mixed uh, wools so some of them are the thinner thinner wools which I think are the cruel wools so I'll separate those from the other ones so I'll pop those over here and I've got a bag where I keep those that's a thinner one as well so Appleton but I think an Appleton cruel wool and then this one's an Appleton um, tapestry wool, I think they call these ones. This is Fleur de Paris, Bella Lusso, hand, brand dyed, not hand dyed, brand dyed, made in Germany. Painters Threads Collection. Oh, that's interesting, but look at the beautiful colours in that. Martha, I know you'll be looking at it going, wow, but you dye your own threads um, now, so you can get similar similar colors that's lovely a lantern all wool mending so that's quite a that looks quite vintage thread to me some of those labels will be nice to put in my haberdashery style book some more nice thin thin wools that looks like a very nice old a label from Bourne and hollingsworth super botany mending wool so yeah i think these ones i um, picked because they look to be a yeah, very vintage packaging and then just some other little random random scarics that i can tie on and perfect for perfect for slow stitching 
some Cascade House tapestry wool in a beautiful variegated pinky colour. And then these ones would be the Appleton, Appleton wools. Let's put that one back in its back in its label. And I think this one's probably the similar colour, so they can probably go both both together. Then what else do we have in here? We have I think again I selected these because they were on beautiful um, old style packaging. A little speck of something on there. Um, genuine cruel wool, imported virgin wool. How fabulous is that? Made in USA. Another one. So yeah, 20 cents. How fabulous. I don't know how long that means these have been around for. But I was just saying um, to Olga Viva the other day, I don't often find things made in the USA, um, usually sort of made in England, um, made in France, if they're the older sort of vintage style products that I have access to. But yeah, there's some made in USA. Bob Meadow Spun. Bernat cashmere feel shrink and stretch controlled washable colors 50% dupont crimset nylon 20 yards that's great definitely very old by the sort of yeah the coloring of the the packaging and penelope cruel wool so yeah some of these i'll be keeping in their original original packaging even if i use a bit of the wool i'll still be keeping some on the original um original spots so i'll pop those ones back in here and then got some other nice um, thin so cascade house just a beautiful fine um, cruel wool so that's kind of the difference there's the really thick tapestry um, and then there's the Appleton's style um, yeah cruel cruel wool and this one's even softer the cascade house feels softer than the um, Appleton's cruel wool but beautiful colours, they'll be lovely for doing um, flowers, etc. Which we've been doing a bit of uh, wool embroidery to make our little apple blossom and our flower bud as part of the stitch along with a stitch a day. So if you want to join one of our little community chats when the videos premiere each evening, well, evening time for me here in Melbourne, Australia, um, but morning time for our friends in the US um, and afternoon, I think, for the UK and, and Italy. Some more cruel wool just a little little selection but perfect some of these I'll track in my little travel bag another lovely bit of a beautiful fine wool finish looking at all the wools another little beautiful pink wool is that another cascade oh gum nut yarns now someone was asking me to confirm um, compare gum nut, gum nut yarns I think it was Tess um, in our little chat last night or the night before um, with what cruel wool feels like so yeah very similar um, tests and let's just have so this is one of the cascade house and then let's do a comparison a side-by-side -side comparison let's find one that's actually got the appleton that's a cascade house that one's got appleton on it so that Appleton actually feels softer. Oh, it's still got a little bit of um, fibre feel to it. Cascade House is very soft. And then the Gumnut Yarn just feels a little bit coarser and possibly a bit more like it's got a bit more coating on the, the wool. Yeah, so the softest one is definitely the Cascade House. That's interesting. So there you go, side by side comparison. Now they are vintage, so yeah, I guess some of the feeling could also be due to age. Again, got these because I just love the um, the labels they're on. But twisted embroidery silk in a beautiful gold. How gorgeous is that? But I um, don't know if I can pair to. I might use a tiny bit, but yeah, I quite like them being on their on their little um, bobbins. So that's very sweet, and even where the labels been and just the aging on the the packaging. A knitting silk again I would have got this for its um, yeah for its packaging Lister and Co's Manningham Mills I never never use and just looks beautiful in its shade number 53 even just that little that little label just looks lovely you could even just have a photo of that and have that um, 
yeah, in something. So that might go have to just go in holus bolus in my wall hanging or something. I'm not sure. And then I love, I, I can't go past stocking up on the beautiful um, older, um, more vintage coloured tones. And so, yeah, I've been using these quite a bit in my little stitchery squares, um, coats. What's this one? Another coats one. That's just a DMC. Apparently. Another coats. But they're just, it's a lovely, lovely colour, that really natural natural colour they're a lovely thickness just to add some accents when you're when you're stitching so they are a whole lot of loveliness and then finally I think I got this one because of the wooden and I thought oh that's nice a wooden wooden bobbin let's unwrap it so it's a nice gold um, and then this one's quite a textural a textural gold but yeah I think I particularly thought this little bobbin and be even nice with a little sorry I've just taken it out of range it'd be even nice with a little um hanging down hanging down thing on it that's beautiful and in fact you can yeah it's a um, see through so you can run even something down to hang it up and then that could have um a stitchery hanging down from it that's a great idea so I'm going to keep that one out to remind myself that that's another project another project to do so there you go that is um the fun and games um that can be found in a bag that you haven't sorted through and i just thought hey why not share it with you because i know many of you love the thrifty thursday videos so go and give some love to the other thrifty thursday folks um and i better yeah stop filming and get it uploaded before thursday is done and dusted here in here in melbourne australia so i hope you're having a great day um take care and i'll speak to you soon bye everyone <music>